Welcome back to the show, the eternal show. We're never gonna die. We're gonna live forever. It's a week in June and it's Father's Day, but this is gonna come out on Thursday. Hope you have a good day with your days and stuff. What did you fuck I up, Mike? I broke my chair. <laughs> 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 now it's permanently... Yes. It's, uh, hold on, hold on. I think I'm... Yeah, I'm permanently like lopsided now. Damn it! <laughs> I'm just going to jump on the other side of it. <laughs> and see if that fixes it. It's probably going to snap off. I'm going to bust my head on this desk. <laughs> you look like you're bouncing on top of sex. <laughs> <laughs> on top of sex. Oh, that corrected it a little bit. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to bounce on the front of it now. I totally lost Is this lost what sex track feels like um, for the lady? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, Just bouncing 100%. up and down on the lopsided chair? Okay, yes. sorry, you can continue Absolutely. with the rest of whatever our thing is while I'm bouncing. <laughs> Oh, I think the gain on my thing got messed up. The little dial. So it might be weird at first and loud. Well, it's fine. Great. Now we know. Mike Super Short Show. Mike Super Short Show. Let's see. Welcome to AAWI. The end also with you podcast. <laughs> I can't while watching you bounce. I have to bounce every to week. fix it. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're here every week. Except for the weeks when we can't be. But mostly every week. We're every Has there week. been a week that we missed okay? it? Okay. No. <laughs> this has been a great start of the show. Will be. I know. <laughs> I just know that eventually there will be a week where we miss it. So I just don't want them to, exp- you know, I just don't want to let our listeners and viewers and friends down, you know? We um, don't have friends. Every week. <laughs> we don't have friends. Just kidding. We have lifelong friends. Lifelong friends and um, lifelong family because um, even if you hate them, you can't get rid of them because they're your family no matter what. Because blood. <laughs> <laughs> All that bouncing uh, made boogers come out of my nose. Is that what happens to women? They yes. have boogers come out of their nose during sex because of bouncing? Yeah, definitely. That's it. God. I want to throw up. <laughs> I hate boogers. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. Even if you have a family member that's been hunted by the FBI and you haven't heard from them in years. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that is close to home. <laughs> <laughs> They're still family. <laughs> that's true. That's Lifetime. true. <laughs> She is still family. Uh, uh, we hope you're listening, Aunt. Um, don't say her name. Person. <laughs> aunt, I don't remember her name. Aunt Good. Person. <laughs> aunt Person. Person made of ants. Aunt Person. People, person, paper. Aunt, people, person, paper, people. There we go. Dunder Mifflin. <laughs> Every week, join us and all our other lifelong friends as we laugh together, which we haven't done any of yet. Goo. <laughs> That's how I laugh now. She- <laughs> <laughs> this is how Here's people laugh in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Gosling, Awful. Blue Valentine, Blue Velvet, Blue Steel. <sighs> What's Blue Crush? The movie with the surfers. Yeah, and the and the and the and the and the. Sharks. Everybody go Google Blue Waffle. Make sure Guys, image so safe surfers. <laughs> 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 yeah. Mike a, broke a chair. This has been a it's, it couldn't be helped. <laughs> this has been a mistake. mistake. Oh, I wish we could mulligan. I wish we could get a do over. I mean, I guess technically we could, but why would I mean, we? we? We need them to know we're not perfect. If we just technically everything, then nothing is special. Technically, you're right. <laughs> What do you have left of this intro to say? <laughs> we got to say our names. Oh, man. I've barely made it through the first bit of the, the thing. Okay, so every week we're going to be here, except for the weeks that we're not here, which we don't have any plans for that yet, but it'll probably right. happen at some point. Join us and all your other lifelong friends as we laugh together, share secrets, and strengthen our friendships on this off-color Mr. Rogers-esque show. Uh, what if it was a Mr. Robot-esque oh. show? <laughs> Hashtag Holden's Golden Showers. Because <laughs> he likes Mr. Robot. I'm one of your hosts, Jesse Neal. But you can call me Jesse. Neil. And with me, <laughs> Neil. And with me, I've got Chad Michael Ennis. 
Hola, la ciudad de México. I'll see your dad in Mexico. <laughs> My mom's in Mexico? <laughs> <laughs> With your dad. They're on vacation. <sighs> They're on vacation. Yep. And of course, all you other lifelong friends listening and watching across the world... I'm so happy to be here with all of you, especially and also because we're being some real you. goofies. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, my so, God. I, and <laughs> we are zero for zero this morning, this day, this afternoon. Guys, I had two splinters in the tip of my finger. So you did. Two rat ninja that's people. That's why. Rat ninja. Oh, yeah. Splinter. Yep. <sighs> Anyways. Where were we? I no, you're gonna ask me a question. Okay, and also with you, Mike. I'm gonna start today <laughs> by asking you a question. Okay, okay and I want okay. you to answer honestly. I accept. Are you gonna have to get a new chair? I don't know. I've gotten this one back to kind of a a level spot. I think what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to <laughs> sex on it some more. I'm gonna have to sit here and hold a level. Because I can tell when my two hands are level. I'm going to have to hold a level. Maybe I'll, It's easier for me to do it in camera when my hands are upside down. I'm going to hold my hands perfectly level. I'm going to put a level on top of them, and then I'm going to sit in the chair. And then when the chair, if it still shows that it's unlevel, <laughs> then I'm going to Well, wait, but if balance. your hands are level, even if the chair is not level, but you can get your hands level, maybe you should put it in the chair. When I say my hands are perfectly level, I mean that they are perfectly attuned to my body. And how level my body is. <laughs> so if my body is 10 degrees to the left, my hands know exactly how to be 10 degrees to the left. Oh, well, show me what you feel like right now. Let me see it in the, let me see your hands in the camera. I, well, here's the thing, Jesse. If I put my hands up, it's going to match my body. So it's going to look great no matter what. <laughs> Just stop <laughs> asking questions. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm going to do that. I I'm going to put the level on top of my hand. And then if it shows that, oh, no, I'm leaning to the left, then I'm going to go to the right. I'm just going to bounce, 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 bounce. Bounce, and then I'll come baby, back and I'll bounce, try it again. baby. Wow. Wow. And that's how it will have to be. Uh, so, you heard it here first. You know how, America. you know how like, you take a, a piece of metal or, like, a paper clip or something like that, and you just bend it one way, and you bend it back, and you bend it the other way, and you bend it back, and eventually it snaps. And then it breaks. Yeah. I assume that's going to happen to my chair soon because I bounced one way too much and then I'm going to bounce it back the other way and then I'm, I'm, eventually one day I'm just going to bounce and I'm going to go to the You're ICU. trying to bounce it into submission and it's going to say no more. It's going to say no snap. means no. <laughs> no means no. Take back the chair. Spring. Take back the spring. God, the happy summer. It's now summer, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, Is it the, the first day of summer? Today and is the Father's solstice. Day. And Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Jesse, Happy you're a Father's doggy day. daddy. I am a dog daddy. I'm a sugar daddy. I love it. I'm a zaddy. Yeah, you they call are. people zaddies. I don't know what it means, but I know that it's the thing that people I think call it's, people. I think zaddy is calling somebody daddy, but without creeping themselves out. Because some people can say it and not be creeped out about it. Let's look it up. I can't even say it. I, what does zaddy I'll just mean? like jokingly, I will jokingly call Casey daddy sometimes. And I get and I gross myself out. Siri says it's a slang term for an attractive man, and that comes from the Siri knowledge, not from the web. So wow, so she's learned. She has she's learned artificially intelligent. She is. She's <laughs> let Let's start the show, Jesse. Let's start <laughs> <Yeah>. the show. <laughs> Ugh. Last week, we played a great game called the Movie Tagline Game. Mm, mm, I had mm. a bit of a harder time than expected, but especially on one of them, I should have gotten, but I felt really dumb about it. But it was a fun game. It was a Truman really show. incredible game. Yeah, it was game. the Truman Show. Ugh. It was the Truman Show. Right, right, right. Um, my gosh, I'll never, I'll never get over that. I'm still tormented. But we had asked you all to let us know how you did. And the majority of the people... Uh, an, overwhelming 66.7% of you Ooh. got 25 to 30 points. Out of a total and then of 30? Only, out of a total of 30, yeah. Man, And Jessie, then a 33.3%. You did a lot I shittier know, thought, than everyone else. How many did I end up with? I forget. Do you remember? I feel like whatever it was, it was, it was less than a passing grade. I think we made that comment. I think it was like, it was, was either just 50, over 50%. I either did half or just one. Yeah, I might have gotten like 16 yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to fail you all. Uh, but well, I you did. did. And, uh, and the only thing you can do now to I'll make up to for do it better. is to go put your face in the corner and think about what you did. 
I, do you want me to do it right now? No, I don't want you to do it right now. I want you to do it later. <laughs> and I want you to do it while bouncing on your chair and holding a plate of jelly. <laughs> and then I want ooh, you. Ooh. What's can I choose be, the flavor? Yes, you can choose the flavor of jelly, but it cannot be jam and it shall not be preserves. Here's the next oh. thing, though. I want you to set up a slow-mo camera to, to, to watch you bounce. And I want should to I, see. Should I do this brawless? Yes, also do it braless. No, here's the thing. <laughs> Wear your bra backwards so the strap presses down on your boobs. Oh, so it's like, it'll look, maybe it'll look like I have four. There you go. Yeah, you have a, you have a, it'll be like a four pack of abs, but where your boobs are. But here's boobs, the really yeah. important thing. Jelly is mm-hmm. notorious for shaking. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, the the Destiny's <laughs> Child did a song about it. Right, right. And then... All like it's just like you know like like belly fat. Whenever you shake your belly, it's, people are like, "Oh my god!" It's just like jelly because jelly shake. And Santa and Santa has a bowl full of jelly. He does. <laughs> it's it's his tummy. And so here's what I want you to do. <laughs> I want you to hold the jelly and do an mm-hmm. experiment with a slow mo camera to see if you <laughs> bouncing up and down counteracts the shaking of the jelly and see if it stays perfectly still while you <laughs> were thinking about what you've done in the corner. That's what I want. Or, or maybe it doesn't stay perfectly still, but you know how like people who have spinners uh, on their cars. Fidget when spinners? They're driving oh, fast spinner forward, rims, gotcha. No, like the rims, yeah. And you know, yeah. like when they're moving forward and the spinners are going, it looks like they're moving backwards. Right, right. Maybe the jelly won't be bound. Maybe maybe it'll look like it's not moving, but maybe it's moving like 15 times as much. <laughs> or what if it's moving <laughs> through space and time? In time. And you get there and you We're shake and you're Dr. bouncing Strange. and you're doing this and nothing's happening to the jelly. You're like, oh my God. And then <laughs> you're cooking dinner tomorrow night. And out of nowhere, this jelly slaps you in the face and starts shaking on your face <laughs> because it has traveled through space and time. Oh my Joke's god! On you. I don't cook dinner. Casey does. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Uh, so that's where we are <laughs> currently. <laughs> All right, I'll do that later. I'll report back. <laughs> Thank you. But this week, this week, I am so excited about this game. God, you have told me the name you know of this how game. I am, and I, uh, I don't know what it means, but I'm very excited to play it. So this game is called Banging Out a Tingle. Banging Out a Tingle. So there is uh, an author named Chuck Tingle. Ooh. Chuck Chuck Tingle is a pseudonym. I was about to say, that sounds Uh, like a fake name. It is the pseudonymous, that's a fun word to say, pseudonymous author of primarily gay niche erotica okay okay he self-publishes his works through amazon primarily as ebooks but you can also get them as paperbacks and audiobooks narrated by sam rand tingle began his career by writing dinosaur erotica <laughs> what <and> expanded <laughs> yes what expanded is it gay dinosaur erotica to, or like dinosaurs having sex with humans yeah but like, like a male oh. dinosaur and a male. Oh, human. so it's it's not dinosaur on dinosaur. It's dinosaur on person. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if I like that as much. <laughs> oh. Well, you know, I could be wrong. I haven't actually read any of them. But okay. a lot of the um, images, he he does his own book, uh, like cover art. Okay. He photoshops it, and most of them are like, if there's a dinosaur, it's like a shirtless. Uh, buff dude and a dinosaur so i feel like they're together is the dinosaur um, so he started like personified something like does it have like lipstick on or does it have like really slutty eyelashes or is it just like no, a straight it's up gay. dinosaur it's gay it's a gay dinosaur or maybe it's a drag i dinosaur. mean not that not that a gay dinosaur couldn't be wearing lipstick or lashes that was really awful of me i take it exactly back. right um most of them are they're just like regular dinosaurs like where like looking weird like maybe they're wearing like a weird outfit or something, but oh, they're um, wearing clothes. Okay, okay. 
like some let me let me so sometimes let's see chuck tingle books i haven't looked at i i was just looking at all the titles like most of the time like for example there's this dinosaur on this one um on one of his books scary stories to tingle your butt seven tales oh of gay terror oh my god what is okay I'm, is, am is i okay to google that is that not part of the game <clears throat> google uh only google that Scary tales. Stories to tingle your butt. Scary stories to tingle your butt. Your butt. Seven, the number not spelled out, tales of gay terror. Oh my God. Oh my God. But see, that's, that's a, more of a crocodile, but yeah, you can a, see a lot okay. of the times his dinosaurs will look like that as well. So or it'll be people, like. So they're like ripped hot dude's bodies with like a dinosaur head. Yep. Exactly. Or in this case, a gorilla head and the body of a mummy, and the hand of a, of a skeleton, exactly, and the it's heart really of a shark. Great. But so he began the heart of a shark. <laughs> he began his career by writing dinosaur erotica, but then expanded to stories based on unicorns, Bigfoot, oh. and various other anthrop- anthropomorphized objects, and even concepts. Whoa. That's yeah, big. he anthropomorphizes concepts, uh, which you will soon find out. Okay, okay. So we okay. have ten rounds. We have ten rounds here in this game, banging out a tingle. And so, <laughs> what I, each round, <laughs> each round includes two actual stories by him and one that has been made up. Okay. Okay. Uh, so each round gets three points. If you can guess the fake, like the one that's made up without any help. If you like, or if you're really having a hard time, you can ask me to eliminate one of the real stories, which I will do, and okay. then you'll have two to choose from. And if you get it right from there, you get one point. Okay. So you have a possibility of 30 points. All right, all make, right. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. So each of these rounds... It has a specific theme. Our first theme includes supernatural. It's supernatural themes. Ooh, okay, okay. I mean, most of these are supernatural, but these are specific supernaturals. So, pounded by sexy werewolf twins. Is this the title or is this the description? (laughs) That's the title. I don't have descriptions. I just have titles for you. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So, pounded by sexy werewolf twins, pounded by the gay unicorn football squad, (laughs) or pounded by my handsome ghost boats. Ghost boats? Which one of those? Boats. Yeah, B-O-A-T-S. Boats. Handsome ghost boats. Yes. Which of those three is made up? Very good money. What's funny here is two of them are real. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, which is right. just ridiculous <laughs> so right at first my initial thought is that it's hard to anthropomorphize anthropomorphize boats like how, how are you gonna do although i've seen the artwork and it's possible he could just put a speedboat on somebody's <laughs> hot body and that's it and, <laughs> and it's not the most ridiculous thing i've heard since five minutes ago but uh so they're pounded <laughs> by my two werewolf friends Pounded by, by sexy werewolf twins. Sexy werewolf twins, pounded by the light. The gay unicorn the football gay squad. The gay unicorn <laughs> football squad. <laughs> and then pounded by my g- ghost boat friend or something. Handsome ghost boat. Handsome ghost boat. Okay. So, sexy werewolf twins sounds like it would be really, really good right around the time Twilight came out. So I'm, I'm assuming that's real because it's something that like was in, what was his name? What was his name? Tyler Lautner? The guy that, that played. The guy who played the werewolf? He played the werewolf? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So I feel like he would have made that, like there, there would have been just a photoshopped image of him on the cover with somebody else, like a yeah. wolf head or something like that. So I feel like that one's probably real. The seven unicorn football squad, whatever. Uh, the gay unicorn football The gay squad. unicorn football squad. <laughs> That's football squad, first of all. Squad, it's it's a football team. Although Is it? 
<laughs> I don't know. I didn't I'm never say. Played. Okay, here's the thing: speedboat on a person's body sounds ridiculous. The fact that it's a ghost, who who knows? But I feel like this guy is 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 reaching. He's stretching for content, and I'm gonna say that one's real. And I'm gonna say the the unicorn squad is fake just because of the word squad. Final answer. Ah, the sexy the sexy werewolf twins are the fake ones. <gasps> what? Oh yeah. my gosh, yep. that's, that's like the perfect opportunity. He needs to make that book then. He better. Well, the time has passed for that. Or is or has it? I mean, zombies never went away. You're right. Did did werewolves go You're away? Right. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Okay. 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 Minus. Isn't this great? It's, yeah. So I got zero right it, now. Zero it's, points. It's it's just gonna get better from here. Can't wait. I love this. I'm so excited. How did you about stumble this across okay. this person? <laughs> Casey told me about him uh, because a podcast that he listens to. Um, so remember? Well, do you remember how I went to? I don't know if I told you this. I went to a live recording of a podcast, and it and they did um, like internet like Amazon erotica heavy metal song or something I made up. Yeah. It's one of the titles was one of his in the Amazon erotica. But then I guess they were talking about him again on another episode of that podcast. And Casey and I just started talking about him. And I was like, perfect. This is, this is great. This perfect. is perfect. <laughs> he's, All right. Question two. Written, oh my God. He's so good. Okay. Section number two. The theme is, Bigfoot jobs. Ooh, okay. okay. You know what they say about big feet? So, big socks. Big socks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Bigfoot pirates haunt my balls. <laughs> <laughs> Bigfoot sommelier butt tasting. <laughs> These are all That's stupid. so gross. <laughs> <laughs> Bigfoot acupuncturist opens my chakras and butthole. <laughs> okay. So okay. So the, stupid. So there's Bigfoot haunts my balls, Bigfoot uh-huh. sommelier butt tasting, and Bigfoot yeah. acupuncturist. Acupuncturist opens my chakras. Opens my chakras and, and my butthole. I feel no, Bigfoot like Bigfoot pirates haunt your balls. Oh, pirates haunt your balls. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna say final answer. The last one is fake because it's just too many things. Bigfoot, acupuncture, chakras, gay sex. Those four things, that's a lot to put into one That's a book. lot of stuff. I'm going to say that one's Final fake. Final answer? Final answer. All right. I hit my microphone on accident. So you are correct. Yes. But as you will soon find out, having too many things in a title, not an issue for this man. <laughs> I guess it's just like so, you can't have too many things in, in the butt either. So, in hindsight, I should have put that one in a different location to throw that's you off. That's what she said. Scent. That is what she that's said. That's what he but said. You got. In that's what they said. That's what they said. That's what we said <laughs> together. We said. Section number three. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Ready. Spaghetti. This is <clears throat> butt movies. Okay. So option number one, but again, the final <laughs> days of pounding ass. Okay. <laughs> Buttception, <laughs> a, a butt within a butt within a butt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. These are so stupid. But glorious bastards, killing Nazis and pounding ass. The buttception one is too good. It's too it's good. So a butt good. within a butt within a butt. <laughs> within a butt. I, w- I like to imagine that there's also like an ellipse on an ellipsis on the end. Like a butt within a butt dot 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 within a butt. Within a butt. That's so good. Um, so I'm going to keep that as real. And then butt getting. But again. But sorry. But again. And then what was the last one again? But glorious bastards. But glorious bastards. I'm going to say. But again, it just doesn't sound like an inspired story like the other two do. Mm. But again, just sounds mm. like it's going to be exactly what I've already seen. Mm. Bruce Willis and Ben Affleck do it on an asteroid. I've already seen that movie. That was Armageddon. So I'm going to say, but again, but again is fake. 
Final answer. <laughs> Final answer. <laughs> You're wrong. What? But glorious bastards killing Nazis and pounding Ugh. ass was entirely made up. Very good. Very good. This is so. This was so much fun to put together. I just had so much fun. <laughs> All right. Get ready for this one, because this is going to be a trip. Okay? I'm ready. I'm going to bounce a little bit more because my chair is a little lopsided still. <laughs> this one is themed thoughts and feelings. Okay. All right? Pounded in the butt by the handsome physical manifestation of the feeling that you left the oven on before you left the house to go to your nephew's birthday party at Chunky Cheezers. How do you t how do you tell someone, oh my God, I just read this great book. You should read it. And then you read that entire title of 50 words. <laughs> oh, these are great. All right, all right, all right. The second option... Pounded in the butt by this hangover. Oh my God, I'm never drinking again, except for maybe on Rick's birthday and then on that trip this weekend. But other than that, I'm probably never drinking again. <laughs> and then lastly, pounded in the butt by the physical manifestation of awkward political dinner discussion over the Thanksgiving holiday. Do you see what I mean about how too many concepts is... Not yes. a problem for him. <laughs> yes, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Okay, I'm not even going to begin to recall the names of any of these things. But one of them is about <laughs> drinking too much. One of them is about I don't even remember the first one. Leaving the oven on. Leaving the oven on. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. Nephew's then, birthday party. Yep. Okay. Here's here's. I'm trying to go <laughs> off of a little inside scoop that I saw of just like of watching you read these. Oh, uh huh. You seemed really proud of number two. So I'm going to say that's the Did one I? you made up. Are you Final sure? answer. Wrong. What? Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> the made up one is the handsome physical manifestation of the feeling that you left the oven on before you <laughs> left the house to go to your nephew's birthday party at Chunky Cheezers. Chunky oh, Cheezers. Man. That's so gross. <laughs> Because he, you can't use, like, I, something that I noticed is, like, he can't use actual names of things or people because mm -hmm. copyright and whatnot. So he will, like, just change things just slightly. Like, Leonardo DiCaprio was Leonardo DiCapricon or DiCaprico or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> so stupid. Side note about All Chunky right. Cheezers. I saw a couple of weeks ago uh, one of those, like, Look at every single state's favorite blank, but this one was food, mm. like restaurants. I don't know how they measured it, but Illinois was Chuck E. Cheese. Like, what? I don't know who's going to Chuck E. Cheese that much, but how that becomes the state's favorite restaurant blows my mind. That's ridiculous. I've yeah. not even seen a Chuck E. Cheese up here. It's because you live in Chicago and you're cultured. Cultured like yogurt. <laughs> yeah, it? just like yogurt. <laughs> Mold. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Mold. All right, the next round is themed doing sex stuff to yourself with yourself. Which um, which number round is this? This is one, five. This is five? Okay, okay. <laughs> Bearing in mind, you have three points right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, don't forget, you can have me eliminate one if you'd like. Yeah, but I just feel so confident about them. You do. You felt so confident. <laughs> oh, it's, this is so much fun. I love this game. Okay, hold on. I'm going to burp. I drink some water. Good All burping. Right. Burps, burps burped. Burps burped. Thank you, burping. You're welcome, burping. Okay. Pounded in the butt by my own butt. <laughs> <laughs> Tickled on the taint by my own taint. Ooh. Kissed on the wiener by my own wiener. <laughs> so this stupid. is so stupid. This person, <laughs> part of me, like, I have to read one of these just to see, yep. <laughs> just to see what is in one of these books and how seriously does he take it. In March alone this year, he came out with five. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, it's, I'm going to say, I, I'm going to use my lifeline. Will you eliminate one of the of the correct ones? Yes. Um, pounded in the butt by my own butt. Okay, so that was a real one. Okay, good. Because I'm thinking that wiener, pound or kissed on my wiener by my own wiener, is the fake one. Just because Mm -hmm. of the word wiener. (laughs) It's a funny word. It is, yep. All right, is that your final answer? Final answer. (sighs) You're wrong. Son of a bitch. Tickled on the taint. (laughs) Damn it. (laughs) It's it's so hard because these are all so absurd and ludicrous. Yep. Oh, I'm so excited about this round. Okay. This one is political stuff. Ooh, That's the okay. thing. And this is round six. All right, you ready? Ready. Pounded by Parliament. Six erotic tales of conservative reform with Joris Bonson. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, love, I love the switching. <laughs> Slammed in the butt by the handsome, sentient manifestation of Election Day. Okay. And lastly, pounded by the pound, turned gay by the socioeconomic implications of Britain leaving the European Union. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to say turned gay is right. Because if I've learned anything from my gay friends, it's that gay people love the idea of straight people turning gay. Turning gay? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) So I'm going to leave that one as true. Okay. And then I'm going to say the middle one. The manifestation Mm -hmm. of voting whatever. Election day? Of election day, yes. (laughs) That's the fake one. The handsome, sentient manifestation. All right. Is that your final answer? Final answer. Uh, wrong god damn it <laughs> it was pounded by parliament six erotic tales of conservative reform with joris bonson joris bonson <laughs> okay 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 Ooh, th- i still only got three Seven, points eight, right nine, ten. Uh, yep <laughs> okay <laughs> here we go i'm gonna take these last four as seriously as possible <clears throat> you could do it. I'm going to put on my right. serious face. I think you're really going to like this round. <laughs> serious face is really weird looking. <laughs> you look like a little beaver. <laughs> there are no beavers the in these books. Penis wood? Oh! Penis wood? Anybody? Very good, very good. <laughs> I think you'll like this round. Okay. The theme on this round is video games. <gasps> Ooh, I do like the sound of this. Yes. All right, option number one. Poke butt go. <laughs> Pounded by them all. <laughs> Poke butt. <laughs> Poke butt go. Pounded by them all. Okay. Uh, uh, M like them or a mall? Like an entire mall pounds this person in the butt. Oh, oh, a, M like them. Pounded okay. by a, a by a, like apostrophe E M. Okay, perfect. Yeah, pounded by a mall. Option two. Bisexual arcade machines work my slot. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then the last one, the last of butts, seduced by the physical manifestation of being remastered for the butt station four. That's a that's a lot. That last one's a lot. Also, Ulta, Alto, Balto, Age of Ultron, Oliver Twist. Let's go with that one. The last one. The last of us. You think the last off. one? Yep. That's the fake one. You got it. Yes. You got it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Six points. Six points. You're you're rocking it. Gosh, yep. you're rocking it. Mm, mm. All right, we've got three more rounds. Okay, ready. So Spaghetti. round number seven. The theme is, remember that meme? Oh, I do remember so that. Option, I do remember that meme. Is it option number one? Slammed by my handsome fidget spinner. Okay, okay. Number two, pounded in the butt by Left Shark. How many of these of his books titles start with pounded in the butt? (laughs) 
a, an overwhelming majority. <laughs> <laughs> it's like pounded in the butt, slammed in the butt. There's one called creamed in the butt. Or there's several Ew. called creamed in uh, the butt. Ever it's since good. I watched cre- so Dave, good. the word creamed is just like, I can't stop using it, but also I hate it. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so good. Sorry, All I right. missed the second one. Will you read the second one again? Absolutely. The second one is pounded in the butt by left shark. By left shark. Do you remember left shark? Oh, yeah, yeah, from the Super Bowl. Okay, okay. Yep. And the last one, seduced by the handsome, physically manifested sound that some people hear as Yanny and others (laughs) hear as Laurel. (laughs) Okay, okay. So there's left shark, there's Yanny Laurel, and the first one was... Fidget spinner. Fidget spinner. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna say fidget spinner is the fake one. Final answer? Final answer. Nope. It was God left sharp. God damn it. That was my second choice. Damn it. <laughs> uh. Oh, this is so much fun. I love this game. Okay. Two more questions? Round number eight. Yep. So I can possibly get 12 points out of 30. (laughs) Yep, yep. (laughs) Round number eight is uh, themed times of the year. Okay, okay. So option number one, the handsome physical manifestation of Flag Day tickles my balls. (laughs) (laughs) The handsome physical manifestation of autumn turns me gay. Or lastly, the sentient physical manifestation of Halloween eats me out. Okay, so for the same reason as before, the second one is real because it involves someone being turned gay. Mm. The third one is a sentient manifestation, not a handsome manifestation. And we know that this writer loves the word handsome when it's talking Mm -hmm. about manifestations. And so I'm going to say the Halloween one is fake. Final answer? Final answer. <sighs> nope, it was Jesse. Friday. Tickling your Jesse. balls. Jesse! Uh, <laughs> damn it! <laughs> it's, I mean, I, it's really hard to get these right because they're all absurd. <laughs> they're all so <laughs> absurd. Okay. All right. Last one. The last round. Nine points is this themed. time. Let's go. Nine points this time. The last one is themed, not pounded. Ooh, okay. All right, option number one. Not pounded by anything. Six platonic tales of non-sexual encounters. Okay. Not pounded in the butt, but pounded in the soul by the loving (laughs) recognition of the bodhisattva. And lastly, not pounded by the physical manifestation of my need to please everyone because sometimes it's okay to give back to yourself. Ooh. Last one, fake. Final answer. Final answer? Final answer. <laughs> oh, my love. Nope. <laughs> All right. What is that, 15%? <laughs> the one that was correct was not pounded in the butt, but pounded in the soul by the loving recognition <laughs> of the Bodhisattva. <laughs> so you oh got, my God. what, six six points, I think? What a ridiculous um, series of books. <laughs> I like to imagine that they're, like, they're, they're like Animorphs. Like people collect them just for the covers. <laughs> right? <laughs> they don't actually I think read the must. books. So his book, Pounded in the Butt by My Own Butt, Yeah, there's a series and it was, um, hold on, let me find it. Let me go to it. Um, Command F. <laughs> this is so good. I mean, it's a series of these. Oh, here we go. So he's got pounded in the butt by my own butt, followed by pounded in the butt by my book, pounded in the butt by my own butt, <laughs> <laughs> followed by. Pounded in the butt by my book. Pounded in the butt by my book. Pounded in the butt by my book. Pounded in my butt by my own butt. <laughs> this is the stupidest and then there's another. Thing. It's so stupid. Pounded in the butt by my book. 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 Pounded in the butt by my own butt. And then there's even one more. 
I'm sorry, two more. There are two more after that that follow the same pattern. <laughs> That's so stupid. It is amazing. It is amazing. He is, his titles are just truly works of art. Something so you got like that. Six out of 30 <laughs> points. Six out of 30. <laughs> Which. Woof. Six out of 30. <laughs> Woof. Or two out of 10. So that's what? That's 20%. If you look at it that way. You're right. Right? You're right. 20%. So you still failed, but. Oh, I failed. 20%. Big time. No, but what's that Yanni Kakor doing coming out lot. of my mouth? Yanni Kakor. Don't talk about Yanni. I'm going to Yanni Kakor. Yanni. Yeah, you're going to Yanni. <laughs> Yanni. <laughs> All right, friends. How did you do? Please go to Twitter and let us know. I'm dying to know. I, this and is one that I want... really want people to <laughs> try and guess and see how they did. I'm dying to know. And also, if you have any really hilarious ideas for Chuck Tingle titles, let us know. I want to hear. <laughs> I just want to hear what kind of ridiculous nonsense your brains can come up with because, man, the world is your oyster. And so is it's going to do you in the butt. <laughs> the oyster is going to pound you in the butt. Let me know. <laughs> By the human manifestation oh, of an oyster pounding me in the butt. Oh, so good. So good. All right, friends. Moving on to the next section here. Last week, we talked about if you were a piece of sports equipment, what would you be? Mike and I learned that we would each be a piece of sports equipment related to golf. He would be the flag in the hole. You can see him from afar. And you get closer and you think you're going to make it. But then once you get there... Completely unattainable. Disappears. Yep. <laughs> Go! And I, <laughs> I am cute and cuddly, but I serve a purpose. So I'm a cute, cuddly golf club cover. A, a package of them for the whole set. <laughs> I cover your whole set. And this week, we're going to talk about crying. So, Chad Michelle, why don't you take us away? Crying? On a journey. Is it cool? <laughs> um, I've been playing... Up until last night, because I beat it, I've been playing The Last of Us Part Two, which just came out. Just like, just, just like, like The Last of Butts. That's right, exactly. Um, <laughs> and I'm not going to talk about that game at all on this podcast at all. We're gonna we're gonna have a spoiler chat about it on Respawn Aim Fire later this week. But what I did want to talk about, God, why am I yawning so much? Probably because I, I stayed up very very late nights playing. But what I wanted to talk about, there's a, there's a lot of crying You've in there. You've done game. a lot of bouncing, too. There's a lot of emotions going on. You're right. I did a lot of bouncing. I wore myself out. Um, I, I was, it was the most exercise you've been able to get, probably, in a while. That's other true. Other than riding your bike around. That's true. Um, <laughs> so I, I did a lot of crying. There's a lot of emotions, a lot of feelings going on while playing that game. And then it just made me think, like, I, I tried to think of something else, but I couldn't stop thinking about that game. And then I was just like... What makes you cry? Do you like crying? Is crying cool? Like, what What are the, some of the things that, like, in your life you're like, man, I can't believe I cried at that. Or, oh, my God, every time I listen to this song, I cry at that. Or, are you afraid mm. to cry? That's, that's how I wanted to talk today. It's like, just crying in general. Yeah. I don't like crying in front of people that I'm not super close to. Like, crying at work, crying on public transit, crying in a public space. I don't want to, I don't like doing it because it's personal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not because I'm like ashamed of, of crying or, or whatever. I just don't, I don't know. It's like a personal thing. But, oh my gosh. There's this TV show on HBO called We're Here. And it's three amazing drag queens that all like gained a ton of fame on RuPaul's Drag Race. One of them won. One of them should have won. And the other one is still amazing. And I love her too. <laughs> but... So they go that's like, to small. <laughs> that's like, uh, sorry. Uh, what are the three Skylar sisters? Eliza uh, and Peggy. That last one is Peggy. definitely the Peggy what, of the a, group. <laughs> I don't remember what the other one is. Yeah, Angelica. She's definitely the Peggy. Angelica. Angelica. Eliza and, and Peggy. Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're all wonderful. They're amazing queens. Um. And they go to these small, mostly conservative towns and they find, like, they don't have this, like, a, a, a big or, or necessarily have a well-solidified, like, LGBTQ plus community. Yeah. 
And they find these people and they put on a drag show and they get like gay men that want to do drag. They get women who are straight, but like their, um, their, like their daughter came out as a lesbian and maybe they had, you know, they didn't take it very well at first, but now they're trying to show that they're like, like I've changed. I accept it now. And so she does drag or like straight men who want to be an ally or straight men who used to not be an ally, but now they've seen the error of their ways. I'm just getting chills just talking about it. <laughs> I cried in every episode, in every episode. And so at the end of each show, there's a drag, there's a, like a, a drag show. And oh my gosh. And just seeing these people embrace this and everybody being happy and like being accepted. I cried every single episode of that show. It is so... <sighs> I love it. It just made me like, it. Made, I happy cried so much. But then I'll sad cry a lot too. My partner is a real softie and I love a man that cries. That's not afraid to cry. That's why I we lived together it. for seven years. Yep. Common you only wanted marriage. to move in because I started crying. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes, I'm going to move in with him. Yep. I love it. You, you, you're not afraid to cry. You probably pretty, you, you cry pretty easily, I think. Not yeah, easily, I cry. But you know. I cry all the time. I, My you know dad does too. I, I, love I cry it. in, I cry like while watching things a lot. I don't cry a lot just out of life. Like life doesn't make yeah. me cry. Like if I get really frustrated and things like that, I don't like crying is not usually. I remember like, when your dog died. Oh God. Yep. That destroys me. I remember trying to go into work that I mean, morning. of course you're going to get destroyed. Yeah. And they sent you home and I came, I woke up and I was like, what are you doing here? Yep. I, was I was counting the cash. And you and turned the... around and you were crying. <laughs> yep. Counting cash in the drawers, getting ready to get all the cash registers up and running. And I just started crying into the money. And I was like, I have to go. My dog died this morning. And she's like, oh, go, leave. Um, get out of here. <laughs> leave. <laughs> You're making this place look miserable. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, oh, I man. obviously like you, I'm like probably I assume most people, I'm not someone who likes to cry in public. Um, Except for in a movie theater. I'll cry in a movie theater every day of my life. Oh, yeah. Because it's dark in there. People aren't going to be, like, walking by thinking, like, oh, my gosh, what's wrong with her? Right. Is she okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, so, I'm uh, not okay. Usually the types of things that make me cry are things that are, like, family related. Like, if it's a movie about yeah. family and um, – or, like, best friends – because I have such a strong mm -hmm. relationship with both my best friend and with my family. Like, we're all really close. So, those are usually the types of things that get me. Um, and then occasionally, I've started recently happy crying, like, in the last couple of years. Yeah, like, that's just like a being, new thing. Isn't that great? Yeah, so just, like, being so happy or so, like, overwhelmed that I just, I'm, like, the thing, mm -hmm. the, the one thing that I can think of that kind of most personifies this is... Um, in the Avengers Endgame movie, every single time that, like, Captain America looks like he's about to be beat to shit and everything's failing and, and they're about to lose. Spoilers for Avengers Endgame. And then all it's of the people come through the portals year. at the end and they're just one by one, they're coming. And I, I don't cry at that moment. I get chills. I'm like, oh my God, this chills. is awesome. This is awesome. <laughs> but then whenever he calls in Mjolnir and he goes... <laughs> Catches the Avengers. He catches the hammer. And That's he goes, right. And when he assemble. has it too. Oh my God. I'm getting goosebumps right now. But even just well, literally. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. When he when he says Avengers catches the hammer and then he goes. I forgot that Captain assemble. America got that. Oh, mm -hmm. that makes like watching that every single time I start happy. Like I'm smiling and crying every goosebumps. time. I know. Yeah. My nipples yep. right now are just like poking out at my face. <laughs> um okay, so yeah that face. always even just looking at a gif of that moment gets me mm -hmm. teary-eyed I, I don't know what it is mm -hmm. but i'm just so happy and it's so fucking great oh man i remember when my brothers when my, oh i mean i've cried in both my brother's wedding on. but my oldest brother keep talking got you huh Oh, keep talking. Okay. So I remember when my oldest brother got married and people were like i'm gonna cry at this wedding i'm gonna cry i'm gonna cry i was like i never cry at weddings I don't know. I just never cry at weddings. And then um, I'm standing up. I was a bridesmaid in the wedding. And I'm standing up there. I'm like, I'm not going to cry. And then the procession's coming in. And then Ashley walks down the aisle. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and I mean, a mess. 
I was a mess. And then the same thing at my brother Chris's wedding. Just the biggest mess. Just started crying. Just a, a hot, teary mess. Like, and I'm not even talking, like, eventually it was to the point where I wasn't even, like, heating. I was just standing there, and tears were just falling out of my eyes. <laughs> just, like, just a fountain of tears falling down my face. I was like, what is this? Who's gone through puberty here? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I love a good happy cry. I do. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I don't cry at weddings. I also don't cry. This is a thing that it's it's weird to me, but it's just the way that I, I don't. I'm I'm always delayed in crying about terrible things that happen to family members. Like when my grandpa died, I didn't I didn't cry mm. that day. But like two days later, I broke down about it. And so, mm. so like when, when terrible things happen, like when people I love die or, or, or when there's like the threat of that happening, usually right at first, I'm just like, that's awful. That sucks. But I don't cry about it. Yeah. And then it's just delayed. And several days later, I'll, I'll just I wonder what that is. It. Maybe you're still processing it or something. I don't know. Maybe it's shock. And that's why you haven't cried. Maybe I just don't have a Could soul and it too, just yeah. takes me a while to like work up the fake tears probably. Yeah, I mean, we did wonder if you were a sociopath on another on a previous episode. That's right. Of, That's right. Because uh, I'm only saying idiots. happy birthday to people, and text messages are on Facebook. <laughs> In fact, it was yeah, just the, it that... was just my roommate's birthday yesterday, and the text message from our work thread starts coming in and says, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. And it's like, I am not going to say happy birthday in this text message thread. But I did say it to him in real life at face-to-face. Nice. Nice. Some people I won't say happy birthday to on purpose. Because I don't like them. <laughs> because you don't want them to live another year. Like a col- <laughs> the fact a that you survived mine. another year is not happy for me. There's a colleague that I can't stand. I cannot stand her. I can't stand her at all. And nobody, I guess nobody would wish her happy birthday. Because uh, like, we were already working from home because of the virus. And I guess nobody would wish her happy birthday. And Lufthansa emailed her. Happy birthday <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> And she forwarded it to the team. And I was like, no. Oh, my God. You're asking for, like, A, I already can't stand you. And B, you're asking for attention now. I'm purposefully not going to say it. And I didn't. <laughs> and I didn't. You should have, like, forwarded She's her evil, uh, email from Southwest or something like that. It was completely unrelated. Like, oh, we're just forwarding <laughs> emails from airlines now? Okay. <laughs> oh, here's what I got from Southwest. Uh, you know, Jeremy, Jeremy Teagan, that's not a client, is, uh, he's <laughs> flying to Albuquerque. Uh, tomorrow <laughs> have a good day <laughs> <laughs> so stupid Ugh. um yeah I, I i cry i mean gosh when my dogs have died i cried like freaking crazy i can't yeah. handle that shit when dionysus died my hedgehog i cried more than i expected to i ripped me apart that was really? so difficult <laughs> that was so difficult and you know i couldn't snuggle that much with dionysus he wasn't terribly cuddly but i loved that <laughs> no, piece of just shit. by just such a nature made him that way he's <laughs> yep. he's a half torture device <laughs> oh man i just oh i just remember like i'd had a really bad week and uh, my ex and I were still together, and he always wanted to, like, let Dionysus lay on his chest. And Dionysus just shit right on his <laughs> chest. <sighs> I laughed so hard, Mike. I <laughs> laughed so hard. I remember, I mean, I, I think I even po- did, like, a social media post about it. I was like, I've had a really bad week. My hedgehog just shit on his chest. <laughs> it was amazing. Oh, my gosh. I loved that. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, he was a little mess. Um, and Delilah, when she first met him, like met, she met him in his little cage. Um, but she was scared at first. She was like, I don't know. This thing, I can smell it, which, of course, she loves. I wasn't like, I can tell there's something alive in here. I don't know what it is. I can't see it. What's going on here? She was really scared <laughs> at first. And then eventually I'd go in, I'd like go into the guest room and she would be on top of his cage. <laughs> <laughs> You don't get up there. Gosh, that ripped me apart when we had to let him go. That really, that was hard. Um, anything with family stuff that we watch on TV, like movies, TV show, whatnot. Yeah. Because it just makes me think of my family. Like, with people die or whatever, it just makes me think of my family. And I'm like, oh, fucking hell, I don't know how I'm going to deal with that. Yep. Um, God, that's definitely the, the, one, of the, one of the big ones. The, the most, the, the most I've ever cried, I think, in my life is the, the last few episodes of... Six Feet Under 
on HBO, and it was just mm. all about it, you know their, the whole thing is about family dynamics and and their relationships and how they are great and how they aren't great and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, that that finale and kind of the two episodes leading up to it just I had to wait for you to go home to North Carolina on vacation to visit your family so that I could watch it without people <laughs> knowing that I was sobbing. I wouldn't have judged you. We cried. Oh, we God. sobbed during stuff all the time. But I didn't know. Like you just didn't want the reason to. I started watching that show was because somebody told me that it was the saddest thing they'd ever seen. Or no, no, it was. It was someone said they were watching it and they were crying like crazy. And their roommate came home and immediately mm. upon seeing them, I'm like, oh, you just watched the finale to Six Feet Under, didn't you? And he goes, yes. I was like, okay, cool. I have to watch that show now. So like, I knew going into it that it was going to be sad. And I was like, I don't know how sad. I don't know how I'm going to react. Yeah. So. I'm just going to wait for Jesse to go home to North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> and let yourself get teary. Yep. And I was I was like clutching a pillow on the couch. just going. <laughs> it was disgusting. Ew. Like drooling snot tears all over the pillow. And then I just left you, it there for you, you to lay your head on. Yeah, my pillow palace. <laughs> your pillow, pillow palace. palace. I fucking hated that pillow palace. Stupid. Oh, my gosh. Do you ever get like such a headache from crying? Yeah, like this, like when you're sobbing, the strain of it all, yep. and you're dehydrated now. It's awful. And until awful. it finally like breaks free, it's just you trying to hold it back. Like, and then your throat hurts. <laughs> and you're just like, do you think that? Ugh. Do you think tears sing that song from High School Musical? We're breaking free, <laughs> and like <laughs> as you <fight>. cry in, <laughs> <laughs> like as they get released from the duck. <laughs> and start falling. <laughs> We're breaking free. I'm just imagining tears coming out, just screaming yep. like that. One side, with Troy. With arms. Troy, what's his face? And the other side, Gabriella Montez. I'm just like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's so stupid. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, I, I, especially, especially like in, uh, you know, with, um, you know, uh, not all men, obviously. Hashtag not all men. <laughs> um, uh, you, you know, like there's this whole thing about masculinity, masculinity, and I can't cry. It shows weakness and all that nonsense. I just love it when a guy isn't afraid to cry. Yeah, I love it. I'm like I don't know where yes. I don't know where I necessarily get it because I don't think I don't think my brother cries really much during the during movies or anything like I don't I don't think I've seen my brother cry in a long time. My dad, I can only really remember him crying once ever. And that was when my sister went off to the military. And I, I don't mm. I don't remember. So it's not like it's not like in my family it's a normal thing for guys to cry all the time. So I don't know where I got it. Mostly good genes. Does I guess. anybody else in your family cry a lot? Like your mom or one of your sisters? Mandy does for sure. She's I a crier. That maybe that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's like some latent gene in, in your parents or uh, somewhere <laughs> up the line from them. Skips a generation. <laughs> it's a recessive gene that showed up yeah. in me. Does, uh, does Palma, is she a tear? I feel Palma. like she would be, yeah. Is she a tearer? <laughs> a tearer, yeah, that came out weird. I don't know. My mom, my mom, oh my gosh, my mom will cry. My goodness. She's such a crier. My dad is. I don't see my brothers cry very much. I think David is, I think David is more in tune with his feelings that cause tears than my other brother. I don't know what the correct way to phrase that is. Um, that works for me. But for lack of a better, for lack of a better word, that, um, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll get really sensitive a lot um, with, like, friends and, and with us as well. Like, David, there was a time I went back home and I, I had recently, it was not long after my ex and I broke up and I went home and then we met him, like, he, he met my mom and dad and me at a Cracker Barrel just down the street from the Charlotte airport for lunch before a flight back and... I got to the airport and he had snuck like a three page letter into my book bag, like into my carry on bag, uh, saying like how proud he was of me and all this oh. stuff. And I just like 
fell apart in the airport reading it. Because A, I didn't know it was there. Like I opened up my book bag. It was my book bag or my purse. I really don't remember. But it was like whatever carry-on bag I had. And I opened it up because I was going to go get my computer or my iPad or something. And I found this letter. I was like, what is this? And I opened it. It had my name on the front of it in David's handwriting. I was like, what? And I opened it. <laughs> this is this long letter from him. I was like, oh, my gosh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> So he, I don't know that he cries a lot. I don't know. I I don't see him cry much. At my granddad's funeral, he fell apart. He and my granddad were close, but um, I don't know that he cries a lot. But my dad, my gosh, we'll be at, like just sitting out at Christmas. All the family's there, and we're opening presents. My dad will just go and pick up a picture of his parents who have both passed away now, and then he'll look up all full of tears, and he'd be like. Oh, they'd be so happy to be here right now. And just like so teary and upset. And my dad will cry saying a prayer, mm-hmm. like saying a blessing. My dad will start to cry. Oh, He's that such gets, a softie. I love it. My mom does that <laughs> every single Christmas whenever we're having the Christmas dinner. And my mom is just like, and she starts talking about, she usually has her brother Rick like do the blessing. And then she just talks about how much she loves the fact that we're all able to get together. And, uh, and then mm-hmm. she'll start. Maybe that's where I get it from. Because my mom also, every time we go to the airport, just mm-hmm. holds back the oh tears. Gosh. Falls apart. Yep. My mom too. Yep. yep. Maybe you do get it from your mom. He get it from his she mama. Get it from her mama. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, I love a good cry. I do. It can be really cathartic too. Sometimes I just need to cry. I, that's one thing yeah. where like I cry during a lot of things, but it's not something that I feel like afterwards. I'm like, God, that felt so good to cry. I was just like, that was such a sad thing that happened, and now I'm exhausted. (laughs) Yeah, well, I think maybe with some of my mental uh, shit, I'm like, when I'm like really depressed and I haven't been crying, I'm like, I Mm -hmm. just need to cry. I just need to, I just need to have this max, max, uh, this mass exodus of emotion, (laughs) and then I cry. I'm like, oh yeah, I could keep crying right now. I'm gonna just keep crying. (laughs) I'm just gonna cry forever, and then die. Ugh. Uh, no, die. I'm just kidding. That's over dramatic. I can't die. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, I love it. I love a good tear. A good tear. I love it. Good convo. Good honest discussion about good crying this week. Hot honest discussion. H A W T. Hot twats. Hot tamales. <laughs> hot twats. Uh, Anytime I see so the word hot spelled H A W T, I just spell it backwards and it's twat. And then you got to put a T on it. H A W T. Oh, twat. 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 It sounds like it's, it's like sneeze. someone trying to call someone a twat, but also like cough through it. It's like, oh, twat. Ah, <laughs> uh, twat. It's oh, sneeze. twat. Did Dude. you hear what I said? Did you hear? Did you hear that? I said twat. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Stupid. Uh, friends, let us know what your thoughts are on crying. Do you cry a lot? Are you easy to cry? Hot today, Are you a cold John tamale. Cryer? That's backwards. Cold today, hot tamale, John <laughs> Cryer. And that brings us on to a, a quick section where we let you know we need your help. We need your help on YubTub, also known as YouTube. In order to get youtube.com slash whatever we want after the slash, we need 100 subscribers. 100. So we need you to go 100, 100%. We need you to uh, go to our Twitter, click on any of the YouTube links that we've linked to any of our previous shows, uh, or in the click in in this box where Mike just pointed. Here is it here? Oh, that was me clicking. Click, click. Oh, click that was you clicking. Yeah. Mm, our three chat three channels. So go there, subscribe, and once we get a hundred, we can be YouTube.com slash two people that talk about stuff. Which isn't what we're going to be, but we could be. Yeah. Unless that's the option taken. is there. The option is there, unless it's already taken. In which case, we could be two people that talk about stuff sixty nine. <laughs> <laughs> and if that's already Stupid. taken, we'll throw an underscore in there. Or four twenty, or sixty nine four twenty. Whoa. Or we could put There's so many options. I know, right? Can't do both of those at the same so- time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. You know, you could go... Well, both of those involve putting something in your mouth. So you can't do that at the same time. I mean... You would have to alter. Could you be 69ing and only one of you is actively 69ing and the other point is taking a puff? 
Or does that negate the 69? Is it at that point only a six or a nine? What if somebody grabs a bong and they put their wiener in the bong <laughs> instead of their mouth? <laughs> I don't know where this is going. I it's, no it's not going anywhere good. Let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> we need you to do that pretty please for AAWI and also with you for Respawn Aim Fire and also for Affable Idiots. We've got three. There's three Yay. yub tubs, right? Yes. Jace. Yes, yub tub. Uh, you can also find us on Twitter, and that's where, as I mentioned, you can find the links. But we have a fun Twitter. Uh, you know, we put stuff on it. You know, we tweet things, and we say funny quips, <laughs> funny <laughs> little lines. <laughs> so please follow us if you haven't. That's uh, twitter.com slash affable idiots. And you can find Responding Fire content. You can find AAWY content. I do believe Responding Fire has their own Twitter as well. Correct, Amundo. Which is slash RAF or slash Responding Fire. Slash Responding Fire. And get at it, cuz... And that takes us to our next section, you know, because we've been talking about being pounded in the butt all day. <laughs> right. And crying. <laughs> <laughs> and crying. Crying, be, pounded in the butt by the physical manifestation of the desire to cry when you're sad. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> there it is. Found, found a new title. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Matt from R.I. Is that Space Ghost? Or am I mixing them? That is Space Ghost. They are the same. They are one and the same. Our Space Ghost friend, Matt from R.I. <laughs> yes. The Space Ghost who pounds you in the butt. Is that one of them? Or it was a boat? Yeah. It was a ghost boat. Well, because ghost boats, but Space pounded ghost boat. in the butt by my... It was like pounded in the butt by my handsome ghost boats. Maybe it's by my handsome Space Ghost boats. Whoa. Who are you pounding in the boat? Who are you, whose boat have you become Space Ghost? <laughs> and who are you pounding in the butt? <laughs> Ugh. Anyways, Matt from R.I. Rhode Island wants us to know, wants us to know, answer, how do you cut a sandwich? Down the middle or diagonally? And where do you take the first bite? Well, Matt, you can cut a sandwich however you want. I'm just kidding. I know that's not the question. It's like, you can cut it down the middle <laughs> or diagonally. Um, diagonally. I, think I cut mine. I think I cut mine down the middle. I don't really I've got have a hot take. preference. I'll do it either way. I've got a hot take. You're a grown up. Tell you me. don't cut your sandwiches anymore. Stop it. Maybe Eat the I sandwich don't cut whole. My the only sandwich I'll cut is if I make a PB and J. I'll cut a sandwich in half for that. Eat the crust. Because I like to put a lot of Eat the crust. Well, I do eat the crust. I don't cut my crust off. I, I'll eat my crust. But I think if it's a PB and J, I'll cut it in half just because I like a good smattering of jam. Mm, or preserves, okay, okay, okay. not jelly. <laughs> because so jelly like shakes circle. too much. <laughs> it's notorious for <laughs> shaking. <laughs> I like a good, <laughs> I like a good smattering of that, and I know it's going to fall out. And so the way that I feel about it, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich is it, the fallout is more manageable if I cut it in half. Okay, okay. Um, that's the only sandwich I'll cut in half, though. All the other sandwiches. I mean, unless it's a sub and it comes cut in half for me because I got a 12-inch. What if it's a 6-inch sub? I don't need to cut that. Right, You right. know? Or like a like a turkey Sammy. Or a flatbread Sammy. Flatbread Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if I were, like, when I do cut a sandwich, I I know it's a bit of a hot take. Because th- most people I know, like, you have to cut this diagonally. You're crazy. I think I cut mine down the middle. And then I bite one of the edges. I don't like to bite in the middle because you bite in the middle, you're going to get jam and peanut butter all on your face. Yep, and exactly. I don't want a peanut buttery jammy face. <laughs> jammy face. Jammy bottom jeans. <laughs> jammy so bottom jeans. So here's where it all stems from. The reason all we cut sandwiches in general is because we were prissy little shits as kids who refused to eat the crust. And so you would cut the sandwich... And then exactly what you said would happen. You're like, cool. And then you I only you eat cut the it middle. For their little baby hands, the little stupid baby hands. <laughs> stupid baby hands. No, yeah. if we were cutting it for the baby hands, we would just make smaller bread. <laughs> yes. Yes. We would have instead of a, a loaf pan to cook bread, and you would cook it in like I don't know, a, a little tiny baby cradle for a baby doll. Anyway, you so, cook it in a little sippy cup. <laughs> exactly. But see, then what happens is you cut the sandwich, and you're encouraged to take a bite right out of the middle. And then you're right. You get all of the condiments on your face, and you look like the Joker. It's awful. 
That happens when you're three. As you grow up and realize that the crust is not a terrible thing and it's actually pretty delicious, yeah. you eat it the crust. Good. And then there's no reason for you to dive balls first in the middle of the sandwich because you also realize that's the best part of a sandwich. And as a kid, you're like, oh my God, I want the best thing first. Give me my ice cream before my dinner. And that's why you have to dive into the middle of the sandwich. But as an adult, you realize you need to leave the best thing Save for the last for thing last. that you eat. Exactly, because that's the so taste. So eat that's all be in your around mouth. the middle. So here's how you, here's how it goes. I buy a specific type of bread that has uh, a lot of like grain and shit like that across the top of it. Same, so it's same. a little bit more. It, it has a little bit more taste and flavor than the bottom of the bread mm. where the square is. Mm, um, mm, mm. So here's here's how it goes. You make the sammy. You don't cut it. You take a bite out of the bottom square corner. Bottom right or yeah. left, doesn't Which matter. Which one? Either one? Okay. It doesn't matter. You take a bite, mm, yummy. That's delicious. I'm going to continue to eat this by working my way around one of these edges. Doesn't oh, matter which edge you go I towards. I can't do that. You're starting the at thing. the bottom. It's upside down. I can't. I got to start <laughs> at the top. <laughs> so so here's, here's really why you do it. You need to make sure you leave something in the middle as, a, as your last bite, because that's important. It has all the goodness in it softer mm. it's yummy it's why the, mm. the middle of the pizza is usually like the best parts of the pizza too nobody wants the thin <laughs> no crust the part. crusty bit is my okay, shit okay okay first 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 yes the crusty the crusty bits my monitor keeps going in and out are you seeing my video cut in and out as well uh-uh okay good, good, good no good. you yeah you look you look good good anyway Sexy. um <clears throat> so the yes the crust of a pizza is great but when you think about like when you pick up a piece of pizza all of the like condiments and toppings and things like that are all in the middle. And you're like, you take that first bite and you get that oh, sausage, the yeah, pepperoni, the sauce, all of that. Like, mm, yummy. Anyway. Sausage? Oh, yeah. Ugh, I'm not eating pizza that With some pizza. bacon and some chicken and some pepperoni and a couple hundred dollar bills. <laughs> That's the perfect pizza. <laughs> For me, money pizza. <laughs> <laughs> For me, money. And the T is a dollar sign. <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, perfect. So, so here's, here's how you continue. You eat around, making sure you leave something in the middle. But you also need to leave something around the humpy part of the bread because that has more flavor to it. And you also need to leave a piece of the crust to be your second to last bite. Why do you ask? Because two reasons. One, when you're making the Sammy, you usually put the most um, liquid or things that are going to fall out of the sandwich, like your, your mustard, if you put mustard on the sandwich, your peanut water. butter, your jelly, whatever it is, <laughs> you're, if you're sprinkling water on the I sandwich. I love a good water sandwich. You're putting those usually in the center and then spreading it out. And you usually don't go all the way up to the edge because then it just gets messy. So you leave a, a little piece of the humpy crust because it's the better part of the crust. But also you need it there for structural reasons. As you get towards that last bite, if you leave only the middle parts, then you're going to have things falling out everywhere. You need to be eating in a way that promotes that content being pushed towards the crusty part so that you can still eat and maintain everything all within the sandwich. And then, finally, you hold it by the middle part, eat the humpy, car, uh, the humpy part, mm, swallow, and then you take that last bit. It's like It's important just that enough. you swallow so that you don't get too much and choke. <laughs> yes. Don't because, because this next bite, you've purposefully left to be just a little bit more than you can handle as a bite, and you go, mm. oh. and then it's one of those things where, like, your mouth is too full to even chew, so you gotta like figure out how you're Maybe gonna Maybe you need a little it. glass of milk. Yep, a little glass of milk. Or whatever, it is, depending on whatever you're eating. So that's how you should eat a sandwich. Again, you shouldn't cut it, you should eat the crust, and your first bite is usually the worst part of the sandwich, which is the square corner, so that you know the rest of it's gonna be great. It's all uphill from there. The way I do it, I guess, if I'm gonna eat a sandwich that I haven't cut, I get it, and I eat it from the top, but like a corner of the top, because I can't eat an upside down sandwich. I'm not a savage. <laughs> I eat a right side up sandwich. What I think I do is I start it. <laughs> Why do you mind eating out. a sandwich? I have to feel it out. What do I want to start? I'm just imagining it's on the plate. I think I pick it up. And I eat from the top right corner. <laughs> and then I think I work my way across the top. And then I might just go back. Or maybe I start yeah, going. So you eat typewriter I, I, I sort of corn cob it. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
And so I always finish with a bottom <laughs> corn corner. Corn cob it. Ew. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Gross. Uh, that's, what, that's how I like to do that. But if I'm going to cut a sandwich in half, and I don't always, but if I do, it is only a PB&J. And that's just so that I can minimize my jam fallout because it's so good. I love it. And I, I want to have that right ratio of jam or preserves, not jelly, to peanut butter. You know? Otherwise, yeah. what's the point? What's the point of a sandwich if your ratio is off? You know? There is no point. At that, at that point, you have not made a sandwich. You've made a dumpster. A dumpster. You've made dumpster. a dumpster. dumpster. A dumpster. You might as well go feed that to your but hamster or your jerp pole. If you were going <laughs> to cut a sandwich, <laughs> your hamster, lobster. <laughs> <laughs> if you were going to cut a sandwich, imagine, okay. how would you do it? Just imagine, like, okay, you've made, let's say you've made a messy PB&J. Yeah. How are you going to cut it? As a, As a kid... Our sandwiches were always cut down the middle, like right mm. down the sternum of the boobies of the bread. Yep. Yep. That's how I like it. I mean, you could go, the way I see it, you could go diagonal, but that's too, it's too much angle, you know? It's, yeah, and everybody knows angle. that a curve is more aesthetically pleasing. That's true. That's for trio. But... I feel like when you cut it down the center, it gives the illusion of more surface area of, of goodness to eat. Because again, yes. you're cutting it because you want to avoid the crust because you're a child. So whenever you see that rectangle of area, I like, never oh my God. knew that. I just, <laughs> I never knew that's what that was. Like, why don't you just cut the crust off at that point? <laughs> <laughs> because if you cut the crust off Weird. and they won't eat it for some reason, they're like, why does my bread look funny? Because kids are stupid. Except for the kids Uncrustables. Are weird. The Uncrustables were good. We had one of those, actually. We had like a circle cut you out thing. You used to have some of those grape ones, didn't you? Like you used to keep uh, some of those I, around, didn't you? I used you? to buy, yeah. Once I discovered peanut butter and jelly as an adult in my 20s, uh, I did used to buy those Uncrustables, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but as a kid, we used to have the thing that actually made them. Like you would, you would put it in the center of your sandwich, you would press down on it, and it would turn your sandwich into an Uncrustable. Nice. You waste so much delicious, delicious bread and crust. I know. I when know. you make your own. Poor bread. It died for nothing. I used to also do that for my pizza <laughs> in college. You'd cut your crust off or you'd uncrustable no, I your would, pizza? I would always finish my meal a lot faster than a lot of my friends, except for Kanan. Kanan would always eat his, like he would literally just open up his jaw and pour his tray into his mouth. So they um, unhinged the, the jaw. Yeah. <laughs> like a um, snake. <laughs> but I would, I would he always. He's dirty dog. He's down my dirty <laughs> dog. Um, I would always finish faster than people so that I would get bored while I was waiting for them to finish eating and I would play with my food. And so sometimes mm. we would have pizza day and pizza was, it was maybe two out of 10 at our college cafeteria. And so there were often times when Ugh. I would have leftover pizza, and I would take the cup, and I would turn it upside down, and I would smash it on top, and then I would peel the, the rest of the pizza away, and I would have this little circle of pizza. And I'm like, cool, now what do I do with it? I don't know. I'll just eat throw it. it at the wall or something. <laughs> no, I didn't eat it because I was it, done eating. Put it, I was done put it on, your nip, on your areolas like a little bra. <laughs> <laughs> You so that's use it, a Matt. spaghetti to make the... <laughs> Ew, gross. <laughs> Although, if I had a girlfriend who did that, that would be the best night ever. Eating pizza and spaghetti be... off of her naked body. That would be so up your alley. That's it's like when people disgusting. put sushi but on you'd people's love that belly shit. and you eat sushi off of their belly. But no, eating pizza and yeah, spaghetti. Yeah, but that's at least a little sexier than like a the best part. cup cut out pizza. <laughs> <laughs> the best part, though, is my family's history with spaghetti poops. <laughs> so after eating spaghetti, we all immediately have like, I don't like where this is diarrhea. going. Your family poops so much. <laughs> my family, we all it's have the spaghetti insane. poops. insane. But something else the rest of my family apparently gets that I don't get is the bacon poops. And they keep saying, oh, yep, just ate bacon. Now I got to go take a poop. And I was like, that's not a thing. I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> Eat bacon. You better have a bathroom nearby. I remember when your parents came to move us into our apartment, and my gosh, all three of you were pooping at the same time, and I was like, well, I mean, two of you were pooping at once. I, I mean, like, all three of you couldn't poop in our two-bathroom apartment, right. but 
it was like two of you would go and then the other would be like, y'all got to hurry. <laughs> I remember it was, uh, we went to go to Ann Sather's, the cinnamon roll place right up the street from our apartment. Yes. We went there to eat and then we stopped at the True Value on the way back, which is a block and a half away. For the keys. <laughs> yes, for the keys. And so we stopped in there and while, oh, and we were also looking for a mirror for my bedroom. So while we were in yes. there, my mom goes, <gasps> give me your keys. <laughs> okay, so she took the key. She's like, I'll meet you guys back at the apartment. I was like, okay, cool. So I'm just meeting my dad in there. And we get up to the register and we start to check out for the mirror or whatever. And my dad goes, I'm going to leave you my wallet. I got to go. <laughs> he just throws his wallet on the counter and, counter and runs because we also have cinnamon roll poops. <laughs> and it's so funny how it's not like a gradual, <laughs> no. like, I feel it coming. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's like your body opens up <laughs> it and Moseses. allows the poop to it just... It Moseses your intestines. Splits <laughs> that red sea and right says, into everyone, go! <laughs> oh my gosh. Those Ennis poops. Yeah. Those Ennis bowels. Yep. Uh, well, thank you, Matt, from R.I., a.k.a. Space Ghost Boats, a.k.a. Pounding <laughs> in the butt by my handsome Space Ghost Boats. <laughs> Oh, jeez. That was a good conversation starter. It took us off on many, many tangents. Many, many. I love tangents. And lastly, we have a parting positive thought for for you, not from you. It's from Maya Angelou. May she rest in peace. She knows why the cage bird sings. She does. She wrote it. She wrote why they sing. So she definitely knows. Yeah, from Winston-Salem. Yeah, and that's where she died. Yep. At Baptist Hospital, which is part of Wake Forest. Lick it up. <laughs> I don't know what was that accent. I don't know what that was. Know. Anyways, Maya Angelou said, you alone are enough. You have nothing to prove to anybody. Unless That's you're a Trump right. supporter. <laughs> <laughs> In which case, stop trying to prove things to us. Please, dear God, you look yeah, like an idiot. We don't need your... <laughs> you... <laughs> You alone are enough. So if you're feeling like you're coming up short, like you just, you're just not enough, you are. And if somebody can't see that, then that's a personal problem for them. And they can get the fuck out of here. You heard? <laughs> yeah, like you need more snaps for the My out of here. My nose is tickly. Out of here. Thank you. Get that bitch out. Of here. I can say bitch because I'm a woman. It's not feminist. Let's not say bitch. <laughs> that bastard out of here. Which is also an offensive term. You know what? Fuck. Get fuck, the fuck, fuck out fuck, of fuck. here. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. And on that, get the fuck out of here. Because we're done today. <laughs> that brings us to Hugs the end kisses. of our show. Hearts and sharts. Shardy farts. Hearty farts. <laughs> Bye. Ha <laughs>